Sequences, series, and summation notation. A sequence is an ordered set of numbers. Each number in the sequence is a term in the sequence. A sequence can be infinite, go on forever, or it can be finite, which means it has an end. You've seen lots of these in the past. This one, if it was infinite, the way we'd show that, we'd use these are set brackets, one, two, three, four, and we just put three dots to show that it's infinite. And this is a list of the natural numbers. So that one's infinite, this one's finite. We've worked with sequences before, geometric and arithmetic. A geometric sequence is created by multiplication, like I can start at 2 and then multiply by 3. That would be 6, 18, 54, 162, and it could go on and on. Or I could have it end at any number, and it could be finite. Arithmetic sequence is one created by addition. I could start at 5 and add 3. And I could continue on forever, or I could stop at a particular term. We use two types of formulas when we describe sequences. They are recursive, which is based on previous values. It builds on previous values. And explicit. An explicit is also called a closed form equation. This is just a normal equation as you know it to build a list of numbers. Some things you need to know about a recursive formula. A recursive formula is great to build tables. You have to have somewhere to start with a recursive formula because the next value is based on the previous value. A sub 0 equals 3. That A sub 0 is called the index. So this is n, and A sub 0 is A sub n, where n is 0, and it is 3. And this is A sub n. This means A sub n is the current term, current. A sub n minus 1 means previous, the previous term, one term back. And what do I do? I take the previous term and add 2. So a sub 1 would equal a sub 1 minus 1 plus 2. That means that a sub 1 equals a sub 0 plus 2. When we know what a sub 0 is, it's 3. So a sub 1 is 3 plus 2, which is 5. Basically what I do is I take the previous term and add 2 to get the next term, the current term. So a sub 2 would be equal to a sub n minus 1, 2 minus 1, that's a sub 1 plus 2. So a sub 1 was 5, and 5 plus 2 is 7. And you see what's happening here. I'm just going up 2 each time. So a sub 3, I take the previous term, which was 7, and add 2, and I get 9. a sub 4 would be I take the previous term 9 and add 2, and I get 11. It's just a way of describing growth based on previous values. You know, you'll notice that we didn't use a sub n plus 1 for next term because there are different ways you can write this recursive formula. You'll see an example on the next one. In this case, a sub n plus 1, that's the next term, is equal to negative 3 times a sub n, which is the current term, plus 1. Essentially, to get the next term, I'll take the current term, multiply it by negative 3, and add 1, and 
that'll give me the next term. Let's make a table, see what that looks like. I know a sub one, my first term, this is my n, a sub n, a sub one. So this is when n is one, it's negative four. A sub one plus one, or a sub two, will equal negative three times a sub one plus one. So a sub two would be negative three times a sub one. We know what a sub one is. It was negative four plus one. Essentially, we're gonna take negative three times negative four, 12, and add one, and that'll be 13. a sub two will equal 13. a sub two plus one, that's a sub three, equals negative three times a sub two plus one. So a sub three equals negative three times 13 plus one. That's negative 39 plus one, which is negative 38. I'm making this much more complicated than it needs to be. All you need to do is understand what this means. To get the next term, I take negative three times the current term and then add one. So take negative three times the current term, negative 38, and then add one. So the fourth term is 115. Follow the recursive sequence. Take the current term times negative three, 115 times negative three, and add one. And the fifth term would be negative 344. Here's an example of an explicit formula. a sub n equals n times n plus one. If I ask you to calculate a sub one, that means n is one. This would be one times one plus one, which is one times two, which is two. And a sub two is two times two plus one, which is two times three, which is six. A sub three would be three times three plus one, which is three times four, which is 12. This is just a normal equation, and I'm just plugging in values. The difference between a recursive formula and an explicit formula is a recursive formula is based on previous values, where an explicit formula allows me to find the value at any point I want. All I have to do is plug in the index number. Remember the index number is that little number there. This is really no different than saying f of n equals n times n plus one, so that f of one would be one times one plus one, which is one times two, which is two. It's exactly the same thing. It's just a regular equation. It's just another way to write the equation. And just like a regular equation, I can see that when n is one, that's like my x, um, a sub n, which is my y is two. And a sub two, there's my x or my n. And when I plug in two, I get six. So a sub n is six when n is two. If n is three, I can see I get a value of 12. So really, this is just an x and a y that we're used to. It's just another way to write that equation. Let's take a look at an example of a recursive formula and an explicit formula. In this case, a sub n equals 2 times a sub n minus 1. This is the current term. It is equal to 2 times the previous term if I add two. So I could say that a sub two is two times a sub two minus one 
plus 1, which means a sub 2 is 2 times a sub 1 plus 1. In other words, I take 2 times the previous term and add 1 to get the next term. And we can see that in the table. 2 times 5, the previous term, plus 1 gives me 11. 2 times 11, that's the previous term, plus 1 gives me 23. 2 times 23, the previous term, plus 1 gives me that current term of 47. And 2 times 47, the previous term, plus 1 gives me a current term of 95. If we pull some of this out of the table, we could make statements like a sub 5, it's 95. That's my n, and that's my a sub n. We could also say that a sub 3 is equal to 23. If n is 3, then a sub n is 23. Here's an example of an explicit formula. Recursive is based on a previous value. The explicit formula allows us to grab any value we want anywhere by just plugging in values. a sub 1, if I follow this equation, is 2 to the first power minus 3. That's negative 1. a sub 2 would be 2 to the second power. I'm plugging in 2 for n minus 3. 2 squared is 4. 4 minus 3 is 1. And I can... I don't have to go in order. I can jump right to a sub 5. That would be 2 to the fifth power minus 3, which is 32 minus 3, or 29. And I could ask what a to the tenth would be. That would be 2 to the tenth power minus 3, which is 1,024 minus 3, which is 1,021. With a recursive equation, I have to go in order. I have to build things upon a previous value. With an explicit formula, I don't have to do that. I can jump anywhere I want. a sub 10, a sub 5, I don't need to go in order. A series is when we take a sequence and we add together the terms. If my sequence is 1, 2, 3, 4, the series is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. When I calculate a series, I just take the terms in my sequence and add them up. Notice that sometimes we can have a finite series. These would be called partial sums. Or we can have, in this case, an infinite series, where I keep adding the numbers and it may go to infinity. In some cases, though, you can have an infinite series that actually approaches some number every time you add another number in the series. It has a finite sum, even though the series is infinite. When we talk about partial sums, so we take a sequence that has an infinite number of terms, and maybe we just add the first four. There are formulas to calculate these types of things based on whether the series is geometric or arithmetic. But S sub 1 means that's the sum of the first number in the series. In this case, there's only one number, it's 2. S sub 2 means I add two numbers in the series. 2 plus 4 is 6. S sub 3 means I add 3. And S sub 4 means I add 4. And we often write these in summation notation. So here we have the sum of numbers from 1 to 5 of 2 times k. So when k is 1, it's 2 times 1. Plus, that symbol means sum. Then k will be 2, and it becomes 2 times 2. Plus, and then k will be 3, and it'll be 2 times 3. And I'll keep going until I get to that last one. So plus 2 times 4, when k equals 4. Then our last number in the series is when k is 5, 
So when k is 5, we get plus 2 times 5. This process of writing it out is called expanding the series. We expanded it. Expand the series. So I'd work all that out. And in this case, I get 25. There is a famous mathematician that created a formula for a linear series. He did this when he was 10 years old. The teacher wanted to keep the class busy, so she said, add the numbers from 1 to 100. So Carl Frederick Gauss, when he was 10 years old, wrote the numbers down like this. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 dot 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 plus 97 plus 98 plus 99 plus 100. He noticed that if you took that same series and you wrote it backwards, 100 plus 99 plus 98 plus 97 plus dot 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 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1, that in every case, if you add the straight up and down, you got 101. And he realized that there were 100 of these from 1 to 100. So he realized that if you took 100 times 101, you add the numbers from 1 to 100 twice. All he needed to do then was divide that by 2, and he would have summed the numbers from 1 to 100. This turned out to be 5,050. This can be generalized for any linear series, meaning 1 plus 2 plus 3 to any number, let's just call it n, to n times n plus 1 divided by 2. n times n plus 1 divided by 2. If I wanted to add the numbers from 1 to 50, I would take 50 times 50 plus 1 divided by 2 and I'd immediately have the sum. Here are three formulas you need to write down in your notes. If I want to add up the number C n times, I just take n times C. That's the example below, right here. So if I want to add up the number 7 over and over from 1 to 5 times, that's 7 plus 7 plus 7 plus 7 plus 7. Notice how there are 5 of them. Of course, it's just 5 times 7, which is 35. A linear series, that's the Gauss one we just talked about, where I want to add the numbers from 1 to 100 or 1 to 50. Turns out to be n times n plus 1 divided by 2. I want to add the numbers from 1 to 7. It's 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7. That's 7 times 7 plus 1 divided by 2. Or 7 times 8 divided by 2, which is 56 divided by 2. That would be 28. A quadratic series, the sum of the numbers k squared from 1 to n times is n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 divided by 6. If, for example, I wanted to add up the numbers k squared from 1 to 6 times, that would be plugging in 1, 1 squared, plugging in 2, 2 squared, 3 squared, all the way to 6 squared. This turns out to be n, which is 6, times n plus 1, that's 6 plus 1, times 2n plus 1, 2 times 6 
plus 1, all divided by 6. That's 6 times 7 times 13 divided by 6. Notice the 6 is canceled, and 7 times 13 is 91. The rest of this video is questions from your assignment. Question 1. Write down the first five terms of the following recursively defined sequence. They give us a sub 1, so that would be the first term, and a sub n plus 1, that's the next term, that's 1 plus 1, is equal to negative 2 times a sub 1 minus 10. In other words, this is negative 2 times 3 minus 10. That's negative 6 minus 10, or negative 16. And then the next term, a sub n plus 1, which is a sub 2, this is a sub 2 here, that's a sub 2 plus 1, would equal negative 2 times a sub n, which is the current term, that's a sub 2, minus 10. This is equal to negative 2 times negative 16 minus 10. That's 32 minus 10, which is 22. Essentially, to get the next term, I multiply negative 2 by the current term and subtract 10. So negative 2 times 22 is negative 44, minus 10 is negative 54. And again, I multiply by negative 2 and subtract 10. And I get 98. Question 2. This recursive sequence is written a different way. How do I know what's a recursive sequence? That's because it's based on the previous term. Just like the last one was based on the next term. So there are different ways you can write it, but you can always tell when they do n minus 1 or n plus 1 that they're talking about the current or the previous. That means it's got to be recursive. a sub 1 is 1. Looking at our formula, I can see that the current term, which is a sub 2, is 2 times a sub 2 minus 1 minus 2. This would be 2 times 1 minus 2. That's going to end up being 2 times negative 1, which is negative 2. Now, I don't need to write this out to figure all these out. I just need to understand, to get the current term, I take the previous term, subtract 2, and then multiply by 2. So take negative 2, that's the previous term, subtract 2, that's negative 4, multiply by 2, I get negative 8. Follow that process. Okay, to get my next term, that's a sub n, I take the previous term, which is negative 8, subtract 2, that's negative 10, and multiply by 2, and I get negative 20. Apply that one more time. Take the previous term, negative 20, subtract 2, that's negative 22, multiply by 2, that's negative 44. Question 9 is an explicit function, meaning we could jump and find any one of these anytime we want. L sub 0 will be 2 plus 12 times 0. L sub 1 will be 2 plus 12 times 1. L sub 2 will be 2 plus 12 times 2. L sub 3 will equal 2 plus 12. 12 times 3. And L sub 4 will be 2 plus 12 times 4. 
we get 2, 14, 26, 38, and 50. Question 11 is another explicit formula. A sub n equals 4 times n times n plus 2. A sub 0 then would be 4 times 0 times 0 plus 2, which is 0. A sub 1 would be 4 times 1 times 1 plus 2 which is 4 times 3, which is 12. a sub 2 is 4 times 2 times 2 plus 2. That's 8 times 4, 32. a sub 3, 4 times 3 times 3 plus 2. That's 12 times 5, 60. A sub 4 is 4 times 4 times 4 plus 2, 16 times 6, that's 96. Question 14 is recursive. I can tell that because A sub n minus 1 means the previous. This recursive formula takes the previous value, the one we're given is 63, it multiplies it by 5, and then adds 2, and that would be the next term in the sequence, which is a sub 8. 5 times 63 is 315, plus 2 is 317. In question 16, we have a summation series. This means we're going to add it. That is the capital letter sigma, the Greek letter sigma, which means summation. First, I plug in 1. That'll be 2 to the first. And I'm going to add that to the next one. That's when n is 2. That'll be 2 to the second. Then I'll add that to the next one when n is 3. And that'll be 2 to the third. And then I'll have 2 to the 4th. And the last number I plug in is 5. That'll be 2 to the 5th. So we work all this out. This is 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16 plus 32. And that all adds to 62. Keep in mind the word expand means write out all the terms in the series. All the numbers you're going to add together. Our result in this case is 62. Question 17, we're going to expand the series, which means we're just adding 2 over and over and over from 1 to 7 times. So there'll be 7 twos. So there's 7 there, and the result of that then would be 7 times 2, which is 14. Question 19 is a linear series. You plug in 1, and then you plug in 2, and you keep adding them because this is summation. Then you plug in 3, and then 4, and you keep going until you get to 91. We can Find the answer to this by using the formula that Gauss developed when he was 10 years old. n times n plus 1 divided by 2. That's 91 times 91 plus 1, or 92, divided by 2. That results in 4,186. Here we have a quadratic series. This is the sum of 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 4 squared all the way to 14 squared. That's the last number we plug in, k squared. This is given by the formula n times n plus 1 
times 2n plus 1 all over 6. So we're going to 14. This would be equal to 14 times 14 plus 1, 15 times 2 times 14 plus 1. That's 28 plus 1, which is 29, all divided by 6. Put that in the calculator. We get 1,015. Question 26, we're going to write this series in sigma notation. We need to be looking for patterns. The thing you're going to notice, first of all, is these keep increasing by 4. Notice how this is 2 times 4. This is 3 times 4, 4 times 4, 5 times 4. And if I take 52 and divide it by 4, I can see it's 13 times 4. I know that I'm multiplying by 4, and I know that when I plug in 1, I need this to be 2 times 4. When I plug in 2, I need it to be 3 times 4. To me, it looks like it's n plus 1 times 4. And we go from 1 to 13. Now, let's check this. If I plug in 1, it's 1 plus 1 times 4. That's 2 times 4. That gives me that 8. When I plug in 2, it's 2 plus 1, which is 3 times 4, and that gives me that 12. And when I plug in the next number, 3, it's 3 plus 1 times 4, which is 4 times 4, and that gives me that 16. And plugging in 4, 4 plus 1 is 5, that's 5 times 4, that gives me that 20. And to check the final one, I plug in 13, 13 plus 1 is 14, uh-oh, looks like I don't need to go to 13, do I? So let's get rid of this. I need to plug in 12. All right, 12 plus 1 is 13, and 13 times 4 is 52. All right, this works perfectly. There's our answer. Question 27 is a linear series. This is like the one that Gauss figured out when he was 10 years old. Notice we're just increasing by 1. We're going from 1 to 97, and when I plug in 1, I need it to be 1. When I plug in 2, I need it to be 2, and so on. And the last number I plug in is 97, which means this is just n. So I plug in the numbers from 1 to 97, and I add them together. And there's my answer. With question 29, look at the pattern in this series. When I plug in 1, when n is 1, I get 1 over 1 times 2. Notice how 2 is bigger than 1 by 1. When I plug in 2, I can see, yeah, that's 2. It's 1 over 2 times 3. Again, 3 is 1 bigger than 2. And then when I plug in 3, I get 3 times 4, and 4 is 1 bigger than 3. Looks to me like this is 1 over n times n plus 1. Now the question is, how far do I go? Well, notice that when I plug in 1, I get that 1. When I plug in 2, I get that 2. And I plug in 3, I get that 3. So the last one I'm plugging in here is 197. Question 30. We're looking for patterns in this series. 3, 9, 27, those are powers of 3. This is 3 to the first, 3 to the second, 3 to the third. I need to figure out what power of 3 makes that. 3 to the x is 1, 1, 6, 2, 2, 6, 1, 4, 6, 7. I can find that out by taking the log of both sides 
and then bring that down. X times the log of 3 equals the log of 116226. 1467 and dividing by the log of 3. Putting that in the calculator gives me an x of 19. This then is 9 over 3 to the power of n. When n is 1, it's 9 over 3 the first. When n is 2, it's 9 over 3 the second. And n is 3, 9 over 3 to the third. And this one is 3 to the 19th power. So I go all the way to 19. And there's the answer for number 30.